Hey people, Frank Savane here, um, working on Scorpion. Give you a little update and maybe a little uh, description of the drive line that I promised. Uh, let me show you what I got so far. These are the last eight track plates of the whole track. More on that later. Uh, I'm going to line them up and paint them. Okay. Show you what I got. <laughs> One complete track. Seventy four plates on chains. Nice. All right, let's have a little fun now. All right, let's do a little mock-up and uh, I'll explain explain the drive system a little better than what I did in the past. So, give you a better idea on what I'm shooting for. Let's take a look. You're gonna like this.
life, huh? <laughs> That's my favorite view right there. <laughs> Got wide that track is. That's insane. Oh, my track links. The master link is going to be these S's. You see how they lock in there. I'll close them up and weld them. <coughs> Should keep the same spacing if they're hooked up right here and right here. They're the same spacing as the regular links. So I shouldn't have a problem with the uh, the chain when it comes up to it in the sprocket. <laughs> More on the suspension later. I'll show you the drive system. Basically, uh, what you would have in a ride mower, you got the engine, except the uh, it's going to have a centrifugal clutch belt driven from here to the jack shaft. I kept the motor low for center of gravity, which is why I need a jack shaft to raise it up to the input to the gearbox. The gearbox has uh, a locked rear axle. That's the only thing special I did to it. So basically. You could use any transaxle out of a riding mower. Even the square ones will fit in there and probably fit in there better. This is kind of odd shaped. I had to pay special attention on keeping it level and centered so square gearboxes will work better I guess. And it being a locked shaft from this point back would be the drive system for the tank. Okay, the drive system is basically uh, two pulleys, pulley on the output shaft of the gearbox, and then another axle which is going to drive the sprocket. It's going to have a, a pulley on there along with a disc brake. Disc brake is going to lock the shaft which will lock the track so I could pivot. It'll be pivot steering, not zero turn. Almost the same, but good enough. Okay, to drive it, it's basically a belt with a tensioner on there. Tension it up, it'll drive the track. When I want to turn a little bit, I let go and it'll free spin this. The drag on this side will slow down while this side is still spinning which will turn slightly. When I want to make sharp turns of course I'll lock the brake up which will lock the track up and it'll pivot. That's how I plan on steering it. The uh, linkage goes to the steering wheel not the steering wheel, the handlebars. Handlebars, uh, these move independently. Which will be uh, all the way back. Would be the pulley uh, pulling tight the belt. And when I want to turn, I'll turn this, which will loosen the belt a halfway and then the other halfway will lock the brake so that's how I'm going to steer it with the handlebars <laughs> that's just insane how wide that track is the haven't weighed the track yet. I don't know how heavy. Probably about 80, 90 pounds. But I'm not going to use all of it. So 
it'll be lighter when I put it on there because I'm not using all of it so yeah okay okay uh, that's pretty much it for this video uh, I'll leave a link down in the description for ATL TF belt thread uh, I'll start you off at the beginning so you can look through the whole belt thread and see what you missed and then uh, rate, comment, subscribe, and share the video. Thanks, man. Bye.